Hey everybody. What's up guys? Hey everyone, welcome. Welcome to the Monday episode of Let's Stay Together with Lana Paria. I am so excited to have her on the show today. It's going to be amazing. Let me make sure I'm not missing her. All right, she should be in any minute. But as everybody knows, she's an amazing, amazing actress. Um, Once Upon a Time is obviously one of the most well-known things ever. Let me grab her now, I see her. Stand by. All right. Come on, I'm trying to request you. There we go. All right, she's coming in. Hey, Lana. Hi. How are you doing? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm good. Well, it like just got massively dark outside here in New York City, so it's a little thundery out now. It was snowing the other day, wasn't it? Oh yeah, we got snow in May. That's crazy. I know. That is it's crazy. Insane. It's, it's insane. super crazy hot here in LA. Oh, is it? Oh my god. All right. Well, you look good. I see the hair working. I like I like what I see. Good to see you. <laughs> Oh my God, thank you. I decided to sport my new t-shirt. So I we'll love talk it. about that later. Yeah, we are. I'm loving the whole line, but thank you for joining. So Lana, I created this show because with everybody social distancing and self-isolating, anxiety is at an all-time high. And I wanted to give people every day a daily dose of inspiration. And you are somebody who inspires so many. So thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's so lovely to meet you. Oh, of course. And guys, I see you're all super excited. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I will keep my eye on them throughout the interview and I'll definitely get to asking a few, but I would love to jump in if you're ready. I'm ready. All right. So I'm going to go on record right now and say that you are one of the most talented actors period. Like the work you do, the things that we all got to watch you do on TV for years and years and years. <laughs> I mean, it's like extraordinary. It blows my mind. And I think that's why one of the many reasons why so many people connect with you and your artistry in such a big way. But I want to bring it back for a second. I would love to know when you had that aha moment and said, all right, I need to become an actor. Like it's happening. Oh my gosh, that that actually aha moment probably really hit me at 19 years old. Okay. But I had been pretty much training my whole life. So uh, even at the age of three, I was like doing commercials in the house for family and putting on <laughs> fashion shows and, and singing songs and writing poetry. And um, I was always an artist. I was always painting or drawing or doing something like that. And, and playing musical instruments and this was something that I just grew up with my family is very artistic and creative and so I was supported by them and influenced by them as well wow. so yeah so it, it really I started studying kind of more on a surface level when I was 12 and then uh, started taking classes at 16 and 17, but at then it was still like recreational. Like, oh, this is fun. I really love this. I really enjoy this, but is this what I want to do forever? And at 19, my mom said, I'll never forget it. I called her and I said, mom, I know what I want to do. And I'm certain of it this time for the rest of my life. And I'm going to dedicate my life to acting. That's amazing. And you've been, yeah. working, you've been working steadily in this business for you know 20 plus years. And I know a lot of people met you on once for the first time and you would get the question, you know, oh my God, it's like an overnight success story. But you were like, no, 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 no. I've been putting in the work, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been putting in the work for a really, really long time. And Once Upon a Time was my seventh series and lucky number seven. Yeah. And, um, and it was the one that really hit and, and touched the hearts of so many. So it was the show that put me on the map. And it gave me the most recognition. But I love your work ethic. And I know I just saw a comment fly by that there's a lot of aspiring performers on here. But really, this question is for anyone, you know, aspiring to be anything in their life who just has a dream and wants to go for something. What advice do you have about the importance of putting in that work and working on your craft, whatever that might be? 
Well, I think working on your craft is the most important because it gives you the confidence that you need to move forward in any field that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. The more knowledge you have about something, the more, you know, adept you are, the more, uh, the more skilled you are, the more um, educated you are on anything. So you can, you can approach it with confidence and especially in, in the field that I'm in, you have to have confidence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, it, you know, a lack of confidence maybe works for a character, but even behind that, or it can be quiet confidence. It doesn't have to be so boastful and out there and put, you know, there's a lot of actors that are very shy, but as soon as that camera turns on, they feel very secure and safe to expose themselves in front of, in front of the lens. Um, I kind of vacillate between the two. Sometimes they're very quiet. I like to be like, in a corner and I don't really like to socialize too much. And then sometimes I do, sometimes I can't stop socializing. So it varies for me, but the importance of craft is everything. And I think it's, it's critical to study before you approach anything. And um, my studying, I, I would say I studied probably for a good four, five, six years before I really put myself out there and went on my first audition. Like I said, you put in the work, which is a very valuable lesson to many people. And now shifting gears to talk a little bit about Once for a bit. Um, I have to tell you, this is particularly an important show for me and my husband, Gio. When we got married four years ago, my sister officiated our wedding and we said, have fun, create whatever ceremony you want to do. We were like the easiest people to get married. And in her opening remarks, she talked about the things that we enjoy to do. And in our wedding, like ceremony, forever and ever documented, she says, you know, cuddling on the couch, watching one of your favorite shows, Once Upon a Time. So you are in our wedding. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> yes. So yes. glad you didn't tell me about it beforehand because I would have crashed it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great Miami wedding. But anyway, um, you know, it was congratulations. That's amazing. That's a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that with oh, me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But it's just, it shows your reaches as far and wide. And I know through playing Regina um, slash the Evil Queen, that's when everyone suddenly became Team Lana. I think it was a trending hashtag at one point, you know? <laughs> I do remember ago. that. <laughs> yeah, and it's pretty amazing. And I know the opportunity to audition for the show came up in an interesting way, how you kind of got the part and how it all happened for you. So I would love for you to share that. It was very interesting. Uh, Veronica Rooney, who was our casting director, called me in for another project. And uh, the audition was for a trauma surgeon. There's one part of the story that not many people know. I, this was my second read for this trauma surgeon. And I thought, I just did a TV show where I played and was hired by Jerry Bruckheimer. I played a trauma surgeon. Why am I, why am I even casting, like test, not testing, but reading for this rather? And um, I thought, you know, I proved myself once. And right. I said, okay, well, whatever. I, I, you know, I love auditions. I really do because I, I just love to play. So I, I went in there for the second time and read this two page monologue. And at the end, Veronica looked at me and said, I have another project for you. I want you to audition for the Evil Queen for this show called Once Upon a Time. And all I can think of is, I was just like speaking in like, you know, doctor terminology, <laughs> like trying to save a life. But now you want me to audition for an evil queen? Like, what did you see in me? <laughs> and she said, you're a good storyteller. Ah. And I thought, okay. And she said, I want you to take a look at the script. And it's not what you think. There's a lot of people that think, oh, you know, uh, this is like campy, over the top, really theatrical. But it's not. It's as grounded as human as you, as you can be when it comes to telling a fair, you know, it's a fairy tale story. And I thought, well, that's great because I love being grounded in humans. So uh, I took a look at it and I fell in love with the script immediately. Went in and read for Adam and Eddie once. I've read two scenes only once. And they both looked at me and said, thank you. And I said, well, do you want to see it again or anything? Any notes? And they said, nope, we're good. And I walked out and I thought, well, we'll see what happens. Before I got to my car, I got a phone call. And they said, uh, my reps, they said, they want to test you. They actually want to offer you the part, but you scared the crap out of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that's great. <laughs> wow. And it was really the first time I had ever played a villain. 
So this was a, a new thing for me. I was always the like very vulnerable, heartfelt and, you know, broken, you know, character or, uh, you know, someone who was saving a life. I'm, I'm really good at rescuing people. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that story so, so much because it shows the importance of taking a chance and showing up. And I think people get discouraged sometimes, especially nowadays and think, you know, oh, I don't have a shot or that's not the right opportunity. But this literally changed the course of your life, right? Like reading for something else and then this coming up. So what advice do you have for anyone trying to, to make their own path about embracing their own opportunities? I say go for them. I say don't judge every opportunity that comes your way. Even if it's like a, you know, a, a smaller job or say you want to get here, but you're, they're offering you a part that's here, just take it yeah. and have the best time with it and know that everything is, is a stepping stone to something greater. And, um, you know, often opportunities have come my way and I've looked at this going, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, what is this going to do for me? Well, I took a job not long ago where it, I don't think it's going to do anything for my career, honest to God. It's a, it's a very small part but I met incredible people. And I met people that I know are going to stay in my life that I am going to create with and do other projects with. So even though the part was probably this big in this movie I did, I, I met wonderful people who I, who I can call my friends now. Mm. And, um, and so you never know where opportunities are going to lead you. Don't judge them. Just be grateful, and, and if it feels right, and it's not like you're doing anything outside of your you know, comfort zone, and what I mean is like nudity or you know, doing something that really just doesn't sort of feel good on an ethical level, you know, then don't do it. But you know, just don't, don't judge everything and just go for it. That's great advice, yeah. a lot of good advice. Um, a lot of questions coming in about once as well, and we actually, someone, I think Gloria and I had the same question, and that was, what does once represent to you? Oh, gosh. It, it represents not only hope, and I know a lot of people know it as that, but it also represents something that I like to say, um, I like to call it good comes from, good can come from broken. Mm. And um, I, I feel that there are a lot of characters that were broken on our show, and at the core of their being, they were actually really good people. But because of what happened in their lives and all the traumas or, or uh, things that were taken away from them or failures, it's, it, it reshaped them and, um, and caused them to become villains or, or liars or you know, whatever. Uh, it, it sort of tainted their character and... and and yet what we experienced on the show is we saw these people striving to either return to their, their core and, or make a better, you know, uh, to create a better version of themselves. And so, yes, it's about hope. Yes, it's about family. But um, to me, it's about transition. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's also about making amends and taking responsibility for things and owning up to things and saying, I'm sorry. And uh, the one thing I loved about our show is like, there was always a motto. There was always something, there was a lesson to learn, kind of like Twilight Zone. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. you watch the Twilight Zone, you're like, wait a second. Wow, that's crazy. But I learned something from that. You know, G.I. Joe would do that in their own way. <laughs> but, like, but I felt like once had that, you know, there was always yeah. a lesson to learn and it inspired a lot of us. And you've said that the evil queen was the epitome of hope and of change. What did you mean by that? Um, I felt like she just, you know, she, everyone forgets about the awful acts that she, she committed. <laughs> but her journey was tumultuous and it was an inner struggle with oneself. And, um, and we all have that. We all have these, these sort of flaws or, or uh, defects within our character that we harshly judge. Mm. And, and some, you know, that whom are sociopaths don't even <laughs> own up to them. But, you know, the conscious people look at this and go, I don't really like this about myself. And, oh, God, can everyone see this? And I think Regina, it took her a minute to become more conscious. It actually took Henry and the, and the fear of losing him that actually woke her up. Um, 
but when you are aware of these things within yourself and you actively want to change them, that's a beautiful thing. And even though her, her journey was tumultuous and it was very, it was just constant inner struggle and judgment and hatred, she reached a level of acceptance. And I think that is so critical mm. to not harshly judge oneself. We're always going to do something that we're like, oh my God, I can't believe I said that. Or God, I wish I had enough sleep last night and I wasn't such a bitch to this person, you know, like what was wrong with me? But you always have an opportunity to say, hey, you know what, I'm sorry. I got to own that. I wasn't my best self the other day and I'm sorry. And can you just forgive me? And can I make this up to you somehow? And I find often people don't know how to self-examine, self-reflect and, and, and then show up and say, I'm sorry. And I think Regina, as hard as it was for her to get there, she ended up doing that. And that was so inspiring, not only for me, but for the audience. And it's a message that, you know, when I have children of my own one day, or even the kids that I mentor, I really try to give that to them. You know, I try to inspire them. I try to say, hey, you know what? We're all gonna make mistakes, but we can always make up for them. And I think it's critical that people in the world accept, you know, not don't harshly judge others. Forget about yourself, but also others. Um, you know, I had a little incident with a friend of mine the other day whom I've known for years. And she said something that didn't sit well with me. It actually made me cry. And she was fearful that I care, care, like judged her entire character and painted her with one, you know, one colored her with one brush rather. And I said, absolutely not. Like I knew that you were having a day. And just because you made a mistake and you hurt my feelings and I cried, I've known you for 20 plus years. This, we're not going anywhere. We right. can talk about it. We can talk about it. Or even if you're having a hard life moment, right? You're going through a, a breakup or, or someone just passed on or you're suffering from depression. Everyone harshly judges everyone in those moments. And we don't even know what's going on with the other person. And that, that is something I'm, I'm really trying to change in the world. And it, it can, it simply happened just by, you know, telling the story or sharing my feelings and thoughts about it. But I feel like we saw bits of that with Regina. And then I try to carry on her legacy by keeping her alive and teaching these lessons. You know, these are lessons that I, that I strongly believe in for myself and I try to live by. And I hope to, you know, share them with, with my fans, my, the youth. There's so many young women and, and men that, that look up to me. So I, I just really want to be a good example. I like to walk the walk, as they say. Well, I think you're walking the walk. A lot of people are saying how inspiring you are and how much they connect with you. And, and putting out messages that matter is, is why I wanted to have you on the show as well. And we're going to get to some of the other work you're doing in, in a little bit, which, which just shows your character and, and what you stand for. And I love that about you. Um, Thank you. You know, it's, it's, it's important. You don't always see it in our business. So I, I gravitate towards that. I love that. And I think by putting out messages to help the next generations to come, why wouldn't you want to do that? Yes, they are, they, are, they are our future. Yeah. And it's critical that we, um, that we guide them, you know. Absolutely. In the right ways. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, yeah. and I love that part of once was this idea that everybody deserves to have a happy ending. And sometimes that's hard in everyday life to see if you're going through a tough time or whatever the case may be. But I took the message as, you know, everyone's entitled to it. It's, it's something everyone should have. So why was that an important message of the show from your perspective? Well, I think it's positive yes. and it is hopeful, but it's positive. And that's, that's the energy that we want to put out in the world. And, you know, often people think of a happy ending as being with a partner, you know, having a loved one, but like being in relationship in that way, in an intimate right. partnership. And that's part of it, but there's a lot of people that aren't in intimate partnerships that are really, truly, truly happy. My mother is one of them. She goes, I never want to be with a man again. I'm done. <laughs> you know, and it's like, Ma, but you know, he's so great. She's like, I'm not interested. <laughs> and she's truly, truly happy because she's truly happy with herself. Yeah. And so that happy ending doesn't necessarily have to be, first of all, it's so much pressure to put onto another person to say, it, you have to make me happy. I need you to be happy. It really right. does, as cliche as it sounds, it starts within. And if you do the work on oneself and you really truly love and celebrate who you are, 
that is going to create happiness. And then you're going to attract the right person. Because when you're operating on that frequency, you're going to find that person that matches you. Yeah. And then you can create a happy life together. But it's a very important message and often gets misconstrued. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I really think it's important because I'm single right now. And, um, you know, I won't be forever. I know that there's someone out there who I'm going to jive with. I can't believe it, just the jive. Um, <laughs> but so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna gel with, I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna see eye to eye and, and that person will come. But right now, even without them, I'm very happy. I have a beautiful family. I have beautiful friends. I have a, a my dog is everything to me. My health. I mean, my home, when I really take the inventory, I'm pretty blessed. And so it's important that we practice and, and look at what we already do have and celebrate that. And that promotes happiness. I could not agree with you more. And somebody just wrote Lana for president, just saying. <laughs> That's a lot of responsibility, thank you. <laughs> You're like, I'm perfectly happy as I am right now. <laughs> I'm happy not being president, although yeah. God knows we all would love for someone else to be. <laughs> That's amazing. And let me get one more fan question for right now. And somebody would love to know, I think Jackie was her name. Um, where would you have liked to see the Queen's character go next? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I do it, for the audience sake and also for Regina, because she's experienced so much loss. I wish she would have found love again. Like, just like, love on that level on in, in an intimate partnership. Um, yeah. I think she was still healing her broken heart over losing Robin. So she probably needed some time. I know me, I'm a slow healer. <laughs> I'm, yeah. slow, I'm a slow healer. I'm like, you broke my heart. That's it. I'm a mess for you, you know. But, and then I slowly sort of, you know, find my way out of it. But um and Regina, knowing that she holds on to resentment for so long, she probably needed another 10 years before she fell in love. But <laughs> I, just, I just, you know, would have liked for her to have that. And I think had the show continued, that was Adam and Eddie's every intention yeah. was to bring that love into her life, um, especially with Henry having found love and everyone else. You know, it, it's, uh, it was lonely at night for Regina in that cold bed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she for needed sure. a pet. <laughs> a lot of people say they would love to see a spinoff with you one day, so. Oh, well, thank you. You know, we are, we are trying to figure some things out. I don't know if it's a Regina Evil Queen spinoff, but uh, we are trying to stay creative during this crazy time, create That's projects. For sure. Yeah, and, and that was such a big part of your life for seven ish years or so. I can only imagine what it must be like when you wrap something like that up and you have to kind of rediscover who you are, who Lana is as a human being again after playing somebody else so intensely for so many years. What was that process like for you? Oh, God, it was horrible. Was it? Not horrible because I, I had to get to know Lana again. It was just the transition. I'm not good with. I, I promote change, I love change, I, I'll preach about it, but I am not good at it. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. Right. I'm, a, I'm a double cancer, which means like, uh, you know, I'm very maternal, I'm very nurturing, I like to nest, I like my home, you know, I like everything has a place. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was a massive transition for me. Um, my marriage ended, my, uh, my, the show ended, I had to move from country back to this country and back to California in a home that I didn't really live in. I bought during the show, but I didn't live in. And it was just this like, you know, transitioning Lola, even though people are like, she's a dog. She's a dog who's very smart and has really, you know, she's sensitive. So yeah. it was transitioning her here and myself. And, um, and then also, you know, mourning a character who was such a huge part of my life. Someone whom I loved and told her story more than I lived my own. And, um, and that was hard because it was like, well, who... Who is Lana again? And, you know, when I had the three step boys as, as my children full time, it was like they dominated the house as kids do, you know, kids take over. 
I stopped listening to my music. I stopped playing my records. I stopped doing so many things that I had to sort of, you know, force myself into doing. So it kind of felt like, oh, wait, I like, no, wait, I used to like this. I did this all the time. And then, and then it was also fun. It was also like, wait a minute, I can take myself out on a date and like go on a Lana date with self and like, you know, what did I used to do that I didn't do for seven years? I can now do again. And, um, and so it's been a really interesting journey. There's been some, obviously, some great highs and some low lows. But um, I feel like after, you know, uh, X amount of years now, it's probably been two years, I guess. Um, I feel like I'm in a really good place. I, I had a whole ritual around Regina and letting her go and thanking her for letting me tell her story for seven years and honoring her and really just, you know, sort of signing out of character. Yeah. Um, although right now I feel like all I do is look like her with this makeup and stuff. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to put some red lipstick on. I felt like I've been like this soft hippie girl for the last, you know, two months or whatever. Everyone's seen me super hippied out. And then I was like, I want dark lips and I want like black eyes. And then, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I'm going to wear a slip dress. And I'm like, no, I'm going to wear this. And now all I look like is the evil queen. <laughs> <laughs> like, what did I just do? <laughs> it's working, though. It's working. Great. And, you, you know, Lana, you shared a really moving Instagram post, um, I guess, shortly after you wrapped, um, you know, not too long after. And it resonated with so many people. And uh, in fact, I've seen a few people say, you know, that, that Instagram post she did helped me. And if you're cool with it, I would love to bring up something you said in it. Sure. And you wrote, you know, I'm no longer married. I'm no longer a stepmother, no longer a queen. I've started over. Why do I feel the need to share? Because this is my truth. And for all of those who are struggling, no, you are not alone. I'm going to cry because that is such a powerful thing to say to so many people. It's raw. It's brave. It, it instantly helps anyone who feels alone in any capacity and like they're struggling. What gave you the strength and made you want to share something so personal? You know, I have often been approached um, by fans about, you know, what's next? What are you doing next? And a lot of my fans, and I want to thank those who are listening, thank you for not asking me such personal questions, which were was, you know, what happened in your marriage? Are you and Fred still together? Are you, what's going on there? But I could feel it because we were pretty public about our relationship and because uh, we were just so in love and so happy and wanted to share it, you know. But then it, it, that, that image sort of died and, and no one was seeing that anymore. And I experienced through my separation and then divorce a lot of ups and downs and a lot more downs. It was a hard transition. And um, I felt like all I see on Instagram is happy pictures of people and, you know, vacationing here and doing that. And, and I, and I was doing the same, but it wasn't how I always felt. Mm. And it, there's this, you know, pressure of, you know, stay connected to everyone. And it's like, well, I, I, I don't want to right now. I want to go insular. I, I'm feeling really sad. And I mean, I'm experiencing a lot of loss and despair and I, and I don't want people to know about it. And then I thought, well, why not? Like, this is also real and this is very authentic. And, you know, everyone saw me as living this happy, happy life. And, but now I wasn't very happy and I was, I needed to share that too. And I, I wanted people to know that, you know, us celebrities look like we have these ideal lives with the homes and the cars and the flashy outfits and the jewelry and the this and the hair and the makeup and you know it's a facade I mean a, a lot of it a lot of it is real a lot of it is authentic in these moments we are having fun at these parties and stuff but sometimes we have to do these things and it's the quote-unquote job and I felt like we are influencing our youth <laughs> people are watching this going I'm not enough because look at them and it's like, no, we don't, 
we don't see what's going on underneath all the time. And even though I didn't expose so much, I exposed enough to let people know that, hey, I am broken too. And I am sad and I am struggling and I am human. Mm -hmm. And if you are feeling any of those things, know that I'm with you and we are in this together and it's okay. And also know that I'm living proof that, you know, this too shall pass. And, and often we think it's like, this is the end all. I'm going to be stuck in this forever. And it's as long as you choose it to be, like whatever the feelings are, the despair, the depression, you know, sometimes the emotions are so overwhelming and they have to work their way through the body and the mind and the heart. But there is hope at the end. And, and if you focus on that and you are actively trying to create um, a new reality for yourself, you can get there. And um, it just really takes switching the mind. But I wanted people to see this other side of me because I know from talking to a lot of my fans and hearing their stories that they do suffer from depression. And they look at me and go, how do you do it? How do you keep it all together? How are you so perfect? And I'm like, honey, I am so far from. <laughs> yeah. And if I could give them that and they feel like, oh, the pressure's off, then I'm doing something right in the world. Absolutely. It's, it's one of the greatest gifts you can give. And that's why so many people are commenting that you're just such an important example of a strong and you know independent and successful woman who you know, shares things that matter in this day and age. And I think that's when social media becomes like the holy grail is when people use it for the good, right? And that's mm -hmm. what you're doing in so many ways. So on behalf of everybody writing in and listening, thank you for being so real about things in your life and honest. But thank you. It's, yeah. it's thank you. <laughs> of course. My pleasure. And we had a great comment come in um, about about failure. And you've talked a lot about, you know, how people need to not be afraid to fail. And it's kind of got this weird thing because now with social media and everything's perfect and everyone thinks things just happen. That's just not the case. So why does failure matter, especially for all your younger fans writing in? Oh, gosh, because it's failure is actually great. Yeah. It's phenomenal because it it. Uh, it's an opportunity to pick yourself back up and approach it again or do something different. And there's a lesson learned in failure. So you're not going to repeat the same mistakes, right? You hope not to. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, often a lot of people do, and it becomes the pattern. And people are afraid to confront the pattern. But um, I embrace as I learn a lot about who I am. Um, I, I feelings start to derive inside of me or, or you know, new feelings are and um, they're uncomfortable. And I have to deal with that. I'm like, oh, you're a little frozen. I'm going to wait there for a sec. I think other people can hear me. So that's OK. Um, but uh, I see you. those feelings vary at first, but they actually just make you stronger. Oh, no, you're frozen again. <laughs> I think you are. You there? Can you see me? I can hear you. Did I lose you? Yes, I'm here. I can hear you. Is it no, me no, or I'm is here. it you? To me, you're freezing, but you're back now. Oh my gosh, you were freezing. We were both freezing in different ways. That's so weird. That's funny. Are you you're now, back. Are you I good see now? You. I've heard you the whole time. Yeah, I've heard you the whole time. <laughs> There you are. I know Instagram Live. It's like the new oh, way no, of TV. Love. Is it me that's okay, freezing or is it you? I see you freezing, but now I see you perfectly. Okay, good. Because you were freezing. I guess I thought it was your reception. It's fine. We're together. Let's stay together. <laughs> but I heard you everything. I'm with you. I heard it all. Okay. Um, so I, I just think failure is a really beautiful gift. I guess I'll wrap that up. I think it's a really beautiful gift and it's an opportunity to grow and learn. Yeah, 
hundred percent. And that's another great message to put out there. We're going to move on to a few other exciting things you have going on that I'm very, very, very excited to talk about. I'm going to squeeze in one quick fan question before we do to kind of excite some people. And I think Mary wanted to know um, two questions. What was the most difficult scene you ever shot? And how was the singing episode? And can we expect an album? <laughs> Um, so the hardest scene I ever shot was the scene with my father when he, uh, I meet him in the underworld and Regina has to confront him for the first time after she's killed him. That was, that was the hardest scene on, on many levels, not just, um, because of the content and the story and what, what, what we were, um, the, the story that we were telling, um, that was hard for Regina and for me because I, I lost my father tragically and I, and I lost him suddenly. And I never had the opportunity to confront him and, and hold him and tell him I love him and, and say the things I wish I would have been able to. Um, so there were all those feelings that came with that scene. But then it was also just a timing thing. I think we shot that entire scene in 45 minutes. The sun was going down. It was this whole thing like, we got to get this shot. And I was like, are you kidding me? Are you rushing me right now? I was like, I, 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 this is, I've been waiting to tell this scene for so many years. <laughs> and I, I, it just was so rushed and, um, and it required just like, talk about skill. Like you have to kind of just go so internal and you're like block everyone out, all the, the camera crew, every, you know, everybody and just focus like this linear focus and just like go inward um and and quiet and and quiet everyone around you to the best of your ability and and it was uh and it was beautiful it it turned out to be a beautiful scene and the musical episode was <laughs> amazing <laughs> i loved every moment of it every rehearsal uh, singing being terrified to sing and just hiding behind the character and and finding her singing voice and and rediscovering the dancer in me oh my god i i loved it i would do it all over again we might see more from you in the singing dancing world one day one day i hope so very very nice now i want to switch gears because you know you use your platform for good in many ways and you're giving back in an important way with project lead which is one of your newer initiatives. So I would love for you to tell everyone a bit, a bit about Project LEAD. Right, so, so Project LEAD is a summer program for Black and Latino youth in New York City and predominantly Brooklyn. And uh, we're educating the kids about COVID-19. So they are coming from these inner city, you know, these inner city kids living in these communities where there's a lot of health disparities and inadequacies and um, they're going to be getting paid doing these summer programs because all the summer programming funds have been cut and non-existent. So we're raising about $75,000. So any amount is greatly appreciated to bring these kids on board, educate them. And um, the health, you know, health experts are educating them, law enforcement are educating them. And then we are going to send them back into their communities and they are going to educate the people within their communities. So COVID-19 has really targeted the Black and Latino communities, and a lot of it has to do with the lack of education. They've lost jobs. You know, there's no money. There's no programs. A lot of, um, uh, you know, food deliveries, I guess you could say markets or like Amazon, people aren't delivering to them. So, and their markets also don't have like the best quality food. So it's, it's complicated. There's a lot of disparities. But uh, this program is really to pull these kids off the street, educate them, give them hope, inspire them, pay them so they can go home and also contribute financially to their families. I love that. And how can people find, find the link? What, what, where is it? Get involved. So you can go uh, on at NYC together on Instagram. Uh, you can also go to my page and in my link in the bio, you can click on that and it's a GoFundMe uh, account, I guess, or a page rather, GoFundMe page where you can donate there. So on Lana Perea uh, on Instagram and just click on the link in my bio. 
And I think I saw something, which is maybe a little bit of some incentive for everyone out there that they could win a Zoom lunch with you. Yes, they so can. So who wants to have lunch with Lana? Tell me about that. I mean, everyone. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Yes, I would love to have lunch with you. Is when you donate, you do get enrolled in a contest, and then a name will be selected out of a hat, and um, and you will be the lucky winner to have lunch with me, and we'll have a great lunch. And as you can tell, I can talk and talk and talk. So who knows how long this lunch will be? Probably more than that. <laughs> That's great. So guys, make sure you check out that link, and the added bonus is you can have lunch with Lana if you do donate. Um, and now I want to have a little fashion talk. So I see you wearing something. I, I am. You, I see you rocking a shirt. And I know you recently launched your new online boutique. Tell me about this. What do you got? What is it all about? Oh, my gosh. This has been like a project that I've been working on for years. And I just, um, I, I just trademarked Keep It Regal. So I own it. I love which, that. Which I love. And when I, so I designed this logo uh, years ago when I actually did it, keeping it regal. And then I started thinking, you know, keeping it regal is it just, it didn't feel as permanent. I love keep it regal. It feels like it has longevity. It's got like a punch too. Yeah, it's stronger, you know, and it's fierce. And it means like, you know, keep it regal means keep it true, keep it honest, keep it magnificent, keep it glorious, striking, you know, just, really being authentic, being a positive state of mind. And when you're wearing these clothes, I want you to feel good. I want you to represent. I want you to keep it regal and protect yourself. Keep it regal and be responsible. You know, it's it's really about just being, um, you know, being aligned with like, what is the greatest good for the world? Not just for oneself, but being conscious, you know, and um, and being classy. You know, but even being, a, even if it's being a rebel, you know, being a regal rebel is cool too. So, you know, as long as you're not hurting people. <laughs> but, um, but I started doing this and I, and I felt like it's really empowering. Mm. And um, right now we have t-shirts, we have hoodies, we have bandanas, we have masks, we have masks, which I'm oh, so excited beautiful. about. I know I'm like in total keep it regal gear. I um, love it. Yeah, we have these awesome hoodies that um, are super cozy and, and they're great and you're going to love them. And like, I, I've been wearing mine. Uh, we have tank tops. I'm, gonna, I'm going to be designing more things. We have a lot of colors available, but we have so many right now that are offered. But um, we have great summer colors and we have uh, ball caps and, um, you know, snapbacks and dad hats. And uh, it's, it's really, there's a little something for everyone, for men, women, and children. So we have youth wear as well. I see we as if it's like multiple people, but it's really just me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your collection. It's all of it. Right, right. And where can people shop it? So you can go to keepitregal.net. Okay. And that's my website. And you can also go to the Instagram page where the link is in the bio. And that page is called Keep It Regal Boutique. So Great. at Keep It Regal Boutique. And, and um, I go on live. I started doing that last night at Keep, a Regal, Keep It Regal Boutique. And I started, you know, I'm, I'm learning. And one of my fans last night wrote and said, where's the size chart? And I was like, oh, my God, I forgot the size chart. So, um <laughs> I went on live randomly, impromptu, and you know, you kind of select names. And I just like randomly select this girl's name. Her name is Angel. I said, oh, it sounds nice. I'll click on her name. And she said, I was the one who wrote you about the sizes. And there were like 400 people that were watching. Oh. And I picked her out of 400 people. I thought, well, this was kismet. Oh, you yeah. know, and, and she said, it was me. And I said, well, my God, well, this is a great opportunity to talk about this. So any questions you may have, I'm controlling the site. I'm controlling the, uh, fan, uh, the Keep It Regal Boutique page on Instagram. So ask me any questions you may have. The sizes right now, we're working on them. The chart's going up. So this is, you know, a work in progress. And I'm learning as I'm going along. 
but it's a lot of fun. And, um, and please, if you find anything you like, or if you have any suggestions, like reach out to me and, and let me know about them. Good for you. What an amazing, you know, business to have. And people are going crazy. I see for Mother's Day, people were rocking their sweatshirts. Um, there's a request to see the mask again, if you can hold that up. Sure. So this is the mask. And, um, you know, it's elastic. Everything's 100% cotton. So it's totally breathable. Very cool. Yeah. I know. I'm I like it. super. I know. Fast. Total gangster. I love it. And, <laughs> yeah. and are packages um, delayed with everything going on? Or can people expect to get packages? You know, you can expect, especially within the States, it's a bit easier. Um, okay. a, a little bit overseas, we have to be mindful of, um, you know, if airfare, like I'm not airfare, but pl planes aren't really flying very much right now. But, but we are getting stuff overseas. So it might just take a little bit longer. So I'll, I can just please ask you for your patience to be patient with us as we get your items to you. If you're in the States, it's going to be easier. You'll get them sooner than people overseas. Perfect. And yeah. Lana, when you think about the future, what types of things, projects, what excites you? You know, telling great stories with powerful, inspiring women. I am uh, developing a TV show with two female friends of mine, and um, and there's a it's a big female cast, and we've been working on that for the last two years, and it's inspiring. Um, you know, I I want to do a Broadway musical. I was working very hard to do Chicago and to play Roxy Hart and also working on Velma. And um, it looks like we don't know what's happening there. So that's kind of up in the air right now. Um, I love directing. I, uh, you know, I directed on Once Upon a Time and I have a short that I'm working on. And I started writing a short and um, I'm loving it. I'm, gonna, I'm actually starting a writing program in July for seven weeks. Wow. Good I'm all you. about education, too. I love self-enhancement. I love growing. What more can I learn? How can I be better? So classes never end for me. I have been in class since I was 16 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and I still go to my voice classes when, you know, before COVID. I still go to my acting intensive classes. I still take online classes. Um, you know, I, I just think we always have an opportunity to grow. We have this one life in this lifetime, make the best of it, you know, and, and, and celebrate and sh celebrate your relationships and, and feed you these relationships. The best thing that's come out of COVID, well, there's been a lot of great things, but one of them has been connecting with people who I didn't get to as connect with as often. I speak to them more frequently. I'm spending more time with my family via Zoom yeah. You know, and calling and checking in on them than I did when I could actually see them. So it's been, uh, been amazing. It's just been, I find that this opportunity, you know, when the world has sort of been placed on hold, I really hope that people are making the best of this opportunity and, and stop focusing on the negative. There is a lot of negative. There's a lot of stuff that's out of our control. And there's a lot of stuff that we can do by, you know, uh, donating or helping others, helping your neighbors. I helped my neighbor who wasn't feeling well and went out and got her bone broth, you know, geared up, like suited up with the mask and the everything. And <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if we can help our neighbors, help your neighbors. Step outside of yourself and see what you can do for others. I love that. Important message to share. A lot of people are wondering if you would ever do a master class in some capacity. <laughs> Uh, possibly. That, I like that, that idea fun. for you. I'm, I'm feeling that. Yeah. You know, I, I love directing and in my, uh, intensive acting class that I did, we, I, I directed the scenes that I was in and, um, and I loved it. I love theater. I, uh, I have a play reading night uh, twice a month, actually, Tuesday nights. And uh, we have about eight to 10 people in the group and we read these plays and I love it. And, you know, maybe I will do one. I, I haven't really thought much about it, but maybe I will. And by the way, I meant for you to host one. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah like yeah. to teach that people, could be fun. so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never know. Fun. 
You I, never had, know. I did this SAG. I did a SAG thing once. This was years ago. I would say maybe in the second season of Once Upon a Time, and I spoke to all the actors there, and there was probably about eighty to one hundred actors in the room. And um, and I ended up just organically talking about the process and choices and sort of how to approach your your craft, and um, and and I got a great response. So maybe maybe I will do that at some point in my life. Yeah. Very very cool. Thank you I'm for the say, idea. Of course, it's everyone's writing in for it. Um, Thank one you. One more question from your fans, and then I have one last question for you. And yes. I think somebody. I'm sorry, your name goes by so fast, so I can't recall your name, but. The question was, how was it playing two versions of one character? I mean, it was a little bit on the civil side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I felt like Tatiana Maslany a little bit in her, from her show. <laughs> yeah. Although she dealt with it on a very different level than I did. God bless. I love that girl. She's awesome. Um, I, I absolutely loved it. I had moments where I thought my head was going to explode, but overall it was one of the most educational experiences of my career because I learned how to work with the camera in a different way. I learned what special effects were on a different level. Um, you know, just all that stuff with like, uh, you know, visual effects and special effects and, there was so much that went into that. Um, I had to, it was a lot of hard work because I had to prep everything the queen was doing and everything Regina was doing, rehearse both sides and then coach my stand-in wow. who was, you know, me when I was, or who was Eva Queen when I was Regina and who was Regina when I was Eva Queen. So I had to teach her my body language and how to move her body. And I had to sort of prep all of that in advance. Because wow. you couldn't do it on the day. So I had to prep everything in advance and then go in and coach her and train her and then, you know, step into my performance and then flip it. So it was, it was insane. Uh, what we did on Once Upon a Time in eight to nine days per episode was unbelievable. And one thing I really wish is that we did get more sort of recognition from the, like, you know, the award shows, et cetera, because if they saw what we were able to produce on a day to day and how hard that was and how hard everyone worked, I think we would have won more awards. Like Eduardo Castro in the wardrobe department was unbelievable. He would turn those costumes around in like no time. And, and we fell into this like, high level of creation like everyone had to operate at a very high level to create that quickly in that short amount of time so i'm really proud of what we were able to do it was not easy but it's one of the best shows that was ever created so i'm really i feel really really good about it and i feel really proud i think many would agree that you guys are one of the hardest working cast like for any <laughs> show period i mean what you all pulled off on a regular yeah. basis was amazing. So, I mean, everyone's, everyone's recognizing oh, it. Oh, thank you, and everyone. Loving it. Yes. And my last question for you, Lana, you've had such a successful life. You've had so many life lessons. You've gone through ups, you've gone through downs. What would you tell your younger self? Oh, I would tell her to ask more questions to ask more questions and to not be afraid to say, I don't know. Cause that took me a while to say, I don't know what that means. I don't understand. Can you really help me with this? To ask for help. It's been something that was re it was really hard for me to do that. Um, and to, and to, um, and to not rush to get anywhere, uh, to take your time. And um, I feel like I did versions of that, but there was also an expectation that we all carry, you know, like, oh, I got to get there. Right. I have a lot of fans who are in their 20s going, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. And it's like, I feel like my life is ending. I'm like, oh, my God, you're not even in the first quarter. Like, you're just, you're in the first quarter. You're just like, you have so much time. And, um, but to spend your time wisely and know that life does go by quickly it does. Even though you have time, it does move fast. 
but to ask questions and and not be afraid to to say I don't know. I think those are probably the two things that I would say to my younger self. And and to have fun. Like always try to have fun in everything that you're doing. I love that. Lana, I could talk to you for twenty hours. Thank I you. I know, it's such a pleasure. Oh my God, this was really? lovely. Really, thank you for coming on. People are so inspired. It's the perfect way to kick off a new week. I'm inspired. I couldn't thank you enough. <laughs> I'm re-inspired. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love it. And hopefully we'll see you soon in person one day. I hope so, Tommy. You're an angel. Tell Gio I said hi. Congratulations on your love. Thank it's you. great to see you happy and healthy and safe. I hope that your family is well and everyone you love is well. And to everyone who tuned in, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure. And I will be watching your other lives on another day. Wonderful. Thank you. And everyone, I'll put up a link so you can check out both of Project Lead and her amazing boutique. So stay tuned. Alana, thank you again. With pleasure. Bye. Take care. Sending love. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.